human nature. And I think the one thing that maybe is useful is if you're if you're a young guy and you're encountering these ideas for the first time and someone's telling you women are a certain way, duplicitous mm -hmm. and whatever, and, and uh, you're a young man, you will interpret that in a way that where there's anger or resentment. And you see that maybe not in how you feel, but in the feelings of people who might find this stuff. And if it is the case that it's true, if it's not true, you have to say what's true. But if it is the case that it's true, that some things are more actually just human nature, that people in power will take advantage of that power, that people like to play outside of their league. I think when someone hears the idea in that way, what you can get is the same benefit of understanding where you are in the hierarchy, where you are in the totem pole, why your dating life hasn't been what you wanted, why you don't have a Disney movie relationship. You can move mm. forward from there and improve your life, but without the anger and the resentment, because it's not right. that women are a certain thing that men aren't. It's just that yeah. people are a certain thing in the mm. areas when that's true. I, and, and I would agree with that. And, and here's a, here's, here's where we're going to find some common ground because I have certainly in the last two years, once sort of this rise of this doom pill, black pill kind of nihilism has, has kind of come into its own. I've had to do a pushback against that. Mm. And it's been really tough for me to do that because a lot of what I like, a lot of the realities and a lot of the, even just asking the questions about certain things, like, don't you think, you know, think about this. What if this is actually true? Then people will take that in the run with that. Or it could be something where I go, okay, well, women are hyper Pergamous women have, you know, uh, men and women have differing concepts of love or di double standards or uh, different concepts of respect. I go into the kinds of things or, or the soulmate myth or whatever, you know, spinning plates and non dating not exclusively. If I get into those topics um, and you're in a state of mind where it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm never going to deal with women again. Or you, you can you can look at it that way. Or you can look at it in terms of, yeah, I'm going to use that so I can live a better life. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I've been doing wrong. Most of the guys that I've dealt with over the 20 years, well, close to 20 years that I've been doing this, the, when, when it comes to anger, when it comes to like, you know, frustration with these guys, it's not anger directed at women. It's anger directed at themselves mm -hmm. because they go, damn it. I knew this stuff was true. I just never had anybody to, to tell me or to yeah. articulate it for me or to let me know what, what this is about. One of the reasons I wrote the second book, uh, Preventive Medicine, is because I had so many guys going, Roll, I wish I would have had your book before I decided to have kids, before mm -hmm. I got married, before I got into this de you know, dead bedroom marriage or before I, I moved to this state or I took this job or whatever, because if I would have known that I would have made different decisions. So I wrote that because I wanted to give guys a timeline mm -hmm. as to what they can expect from women, generally speaking. But the, the impetus, the, the reason for that is because the guys, when it comes to anger, I used to get, I used to, I still do occasionally, but back in like uh, 2014, 2015, I always had the guys from RSD would go, yeah, Rolla, he's, he's truthful. He tells the truth. He knows exactly. He's, he's got his shit together. He knows what he's talking about, but it's truthful anger. And I'm like, no, it's not anger. It's how these guys are responding to that. It's not, I'm just giving you tools. Mm -hmm. Like you're asking me about like prescriptions earlier and, and you know, how can we go forward and what can we do with this? Or what's, what's the ultimate goal? My, my ultimate goal was to simply give guys tools mm -hmm. so they can build a better life for themselves to unplug from the way they've been conditioned and the, what they've thought about their old order thinking and their, you know, the old social contract because they're in a new order right now and the rules have changed. And if you're playing by the old rules, you're either going to get exploited by that or you're going to end up living in such a way that if someone around you is not living the same same way you are, you're going to get very frustrated with them because you think they're, st they're still playing by that set of rules where you have this other book of rules right here mm -hmm. that you think everybody else should play by. Mm -hmm. So when I give guys advice, I don't, even, I don't really give advice so much. I just point these things out, right? I just work here, man. I just, you know, I, I hold up a mirror and you have to want to look in that mirror. And so I get this all the time. Guys will say, well, the, the red pill is an ideology. No, it's not an ideology. It's a set of tools. It's the Chilton manual for intersexual dynamics. It's like, how does, how does the car run? What, what parts do I need? How do I put these things together? How you go and use that is really kind of up to the individual at that point. Mm -hmm. But I have to push back against that. For me, for Rolo Tomasi to say, I, I, I firmly believe this, that men and women are better together than we are apart. We are comp we are natural, evolved, if you want to say created, whatever, you uh, evolve complements to one another. I can show you the brain scans. I can show you how in our ancestral past, if men were protectors and providers and they were strong, the things that make them arousing to women were the same things that also had outside benefits like protection. I can kill somebody. I can kill a bear. Uh, you know, I can provide for you. I'm parentally invested, that kind of stuff. Those blue pill kind of the things we think of as blue pill providership kind of things were only associated with a guy who had his shit together and could and was a badass and was still arousing kind of thing. We've separated those two 
since that time, but the attraction and the arousal cues are still part of our hardware, so far, part of our firmware. So when, when we talk about like, are we better together? Are we better apart? In an era where MGTOWs and, 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 you know, men's rights or whatever say, well, we we're no more marriage, screw marriage. We're never going to get together again. And I'm, I'm anti-marriage right now being married for 24 years. I'm not anti-marriage as an institution. I'm anti-marriage as in the way we do it now. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description. We'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.